Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to a $500 gaming PC build. Yeah, I know it's been a long time since I, you guys have heard me say that. It's been about a month and a half since my last build video and it's been over two weeks since my last video in general. So yeah, that's like my longest break ever that I've ever taken since I've started making YouTube videos. Sorry about that, but I am back finally. I uh, expect more videos consistently over the next week or two. I plan on trying to upload a build video or multiple build videos, you know, every day now. Uh, so yeah, expect those in the next week or two because because I am on summer vacation now. I have a lot of free time. It's just that I've been doing a lot of other stuff. And I've kind of been taking a break. You know, when you do YouTube for so long, you have to take a couple breaks here and there. Because you do need to... Uh, recharge the creative juices so to speak so yeah with that with all that being said let's get right back uh into this uh youtube scene with this 500 hundred dollar build and let's get right into this video now i've get, been gone for a month but one thing that's definitely stayed the same is that the amd fx 6300 is still one of my favorite cpus that's why i'm going with it in this 500 hundred dollar build i did check out some other things like some of the apus amd's brought out but i still think the 6300 is one of the best cpus on the market right now for 120 dollars there's other cpus like the i3 that are around the same price but i really don't like those in comparison and in my opinion the fx6300 still to this day uh for 120 dollars i mean this is a fairly old cpu but just at this price point you really can't beat it with anything intel's providing or am any of uh, amd's other cpus the fx4300 is an option and if you do want to save you know about 20 30 dollars you can go with that but the six core variant in my opinion is well worth it because with the six core version of the cpu video editing is going to be a lot easier uh live streaming on twitch and stuff like that's going to be a lot easier and a few games coming out are taking advantage of six core tech technology like Watch Dogs that just came out. I believe Sniper Elite 3 is and you know especially the games in the fall Battlefield Hardline uh, Witcher 3 that's coming out February of next year. So a lot of games are taking advantage of uh, more than four core technology but yeah this CPU is just great for $120 and highly recommended by me. Moving on to the motherboard, I went with the Asus M5A78L-M. Now, this is a motherboard that I just picked uh, for this build. I wanted to make sure you could fit everything on it, but I also wanted to make sure that we didn't overspend on the motherboard because $500 is a pretty strict budget to work with, but... Uh, you know, if you make sacrifices like uh, this motherboard, I w wouldn't really consider it a sacrifice because at the end of the day, you're still getting everything you wanted um, and it's going to leave you with more money to spend on the graphics card, which at the end of the day for a gaming build is your most important component of any PC. Some people would say the motherboard because that is considered the core of the system, but guys, this is a gaming machine, so... You know, you can save a couple bucks on a decent motherboard and then put that money towards a graphics card. With that being said, this motherboard is still a fantastic motherboard at $57, actually $47 if you want to take advantage of the $10 mail-in rebate. This is going to support all your FX, Phenom 2, Athlon 2, and Sempron series CPUs, and it can support up to DDR3-1866 memory. Two RAM slots, which is going to come in handy because uh, we'll talk about the RAM later, but uh, yeah, RAM prices are still pretty ridiculous. And for $47, this is an all-around good motherboard. It's from Asus. They have a good warranty policy, so this is going to be a good fit for the build. Moving on to the memory of the build, I went with the G-Skill Ripjaw Series 4GB, 1-4GB stick running at 1333 memory. This is about 42 bucks. I couldn't fit 8GB in this build no matter what we could do. And RAM is something that you can sacrifice something on because this is something that's very easily upgradable. It's not like you're going to have to completely replace this 4GB kit of RAM. You can just pick up another stick of the same RAM and then you'll be good to go with 8GB. And 8GB of RAM is really the sweet spot you want to be at, but at a $500 budget, you really can't fit that in. That being said, 4 gigabytes is still going to get you by with most games. Uh, a lot of games are starting to take advantage of 8 gigabytes, but again, six months to a year down the line, you can save up another 40 bucks and pick up a 4 gigabyte stick of RAM, and then you'll be golden. And I don't see, you know, anything like 12 or 16 gigabytes overtaking 8 gigabytes as that sweet spot for a very long time. So getting 8 gigabytes, and then you'll be good for, uh, you know, for a while. Uh, but right now, 4 gigabytes is also going to do you just fine with, you know, the games out right now. A couple games in the future, like Witcher 3, uh, the division uh games like that that's gonna be a problem if you still have four gigabytes by the time those games come out but that's not until you know mid to early 2015 so you guys should be good by then like I said, with a lot of the titles out right now, 4 gigabytes is still fine. Even a game like Crisis 3, uh, Battlefield 4, those can all run with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, granted, th all the other parts also have to be fairly decent, and they are in this build, so you guys should be good with that. 
Moving on to the graphics card, this I went with the Sapphire Dual X Radeon R9 270. Now I was looking at a lot of the Nvidia offerings, the GTX 750 Ti. The R9 270, in my opinion, is one of the best deals in gaming right now in general. $145 after a $10 mail-in rebate, and it doesn't end there. You also get two free games from AMD's Silver Tier of Games. Now there's a lot of good games to pick from, so you're getting two free off this list. These games include like Witcher 3, Murdered Soul Suspect, um, I believe a couple other really good games, Tomb Raider. Sleeping Dogs. A lot of AAA titles are on these lists, so highly recommended. I mean, this is a $145 graphics card, and you're getting two AAA titles with it, so just seems like an absolute steal to me, and honestly, as far as a graphics card goes, this is also exceptionally good, and in my opinion, the 750 Ti just could not touch this in terms of value. Uh, regarding 1080p gaming, it's going to be able to run most titles. Some games you are going to have to lower it to medium or high settings, but, you know, games like Deus Ex Human Revolution, Crisis 2, you're going to be able to run those. And then the later titles like BF4, Crisis 3, uh, you might have to lower the settings just a tad. You're not going to be able to run them completely maxed out, but in a $500 build, you really shouldn't be expecting that. So, And they're still going to perform a whole hell lot better than, you know, what the PS4 and the Xbox One are offering, since those two platforms are really having a hard time even running games at 1080p so an r9 270 is going to be perfect for this build at 145 dollars for the power supply, I went with the Corsair CX500M. It's a 500 watt, 80 plus bronze certified modular power supply. Really great power supply, and it's only $35 right now after a mail-in rebate and a promo code. Absolute steal. It's going to be able to power this build no problem. The R9270 is ve uh, very power efficient, and the FX6300 only uses 95 watts, so a 500 watt seemed like the logical route to go. Not too expensive, and it's 80 plus certified, so this is definitely a good fit in the build. For the hard drive of the build, I went with the Western Digital WD Blue 1 terabyte. It's 1 terabyte of storage space, like I've said in previous videos, uh, but I'll reiterate since I haven't uploaded a video in a while. Um, a lot of these recent games are extremely big in file size. A game like Wolfenstein The New Order completely shocked me when that game was 50 gigabytes. Uh, Titanfall was 50 gigabytes just about, and uh, there's DLC coming out for that game, so that game is just ridiculous in size. So a lot of these games coming out are very big, so if you want to get a 2 or 3 terabyte, hell, even a 4 terabyte, might not be a bad idea, but still, 1 terabyte, you're going to be able to fit a lot of games on it, and you can always just delete and reinstall, stuff like that. Um, it's just for me, I don't really like to delete and reinstall, I just find that to be a hassle. Uh, so if you guys do have the money to sp uh, spare, a 2 or 3 terabyte drive might not be a bad idea or look into that for the future because you know a while ago one terabyte seemed like a lot of space now when you look at it it really isn't because on one terabyte drive you're realistically only storing you know around 15 newly released games which isn't a whole lot uh so yeah um getting a two or three terabyte drive isn't that bad of an idea but like I said, one terabyte is still perfectly fine for most people. It's just people that are stingy like me might, you know, see it better to get a two or three terabyte drive. Finally, for the case, I went with the Rosewell Challenger Black Mid Tower case. It's $35 after a mail-in rebate. Very good case. Kind of plain uh, as far as looks goes, but interior uh, matters way more than exterior in my opinion. And the exterior of the Rosewell Challenger is fairly good. Uh, a lot of good ventilation in there, so it's going to be able to keep all your components cool. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. If you want to, you know, leave me some video ideas, go ahead, comment down below. I got so much catching up to do. Best graphics cards for the money, best CPUs for the money. Yes, it's all coming uh, within the next couple of weeks. I uh, expect updates to all of those series, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.